everyone, and welcome to what is episode one of the Organized Adventures show. And we're so excited that you've actually landed on our content. I'm not sure how you got there. Please drop us a comment on um, how you actually came about in finding us. Was it an ad? Was it a uh, piece of content that someone shared? Obviously, we'd love to hear. Um, and before I get into anything else, also please like, subscribe, share the content because we do want to grow this as we spread our word about organized adventures. I'm going to introduce my co-host first and then our special guest for episode one. So Shandana, how's it going? How's everything in Berlin? It's a, it's a little overcast today, but as you can see, I have a little bit of a tan and a little glow. <laughs> my organized adventure sailing in Greece for a week, which was wonderful and uh, very hot, but the sailing part was amazing. So I encourage everybody to do it. Awesome. No, no product plugs there. We just kept it very much like no, uh, do, an, do, do an organized adventure because it's it's good for your soul. Um, and on the topic of organized adventures, I'm really excited to introduce our co-founder and CEO of Tor Radar, Travis Pittman. Travis, how are you doing? Very well. Uh, definitely uh, coming back also from a, an adventure uh, in the Caribbean. So my first time in the British Virgin Islands, and uh, I'm sure we're going to go into it. But uh, yeah, had a, an amazing time on Richard Branson's uh, private island. So lots to tell and uh, uh, definitely on a on a adrenaline high and an inspiration high. So yeah, really excited about today. Yeah, Amazing. Very exciting. Very excited to hear. So before we get into that, even though this is episode one and we're like, we want to record a proper episode. As part of every episode, we are obviously going to give the guests the chance to talk about their business. It just so happens that on the Organized Adventure Show, we all work for Tor Radar because it's it's going to be our show. Uh, but that actually gives us a good opportunity to have a bit of a intro to Tor Radar for anyone who doesn't know who we are, as well as the origin story and just a quick tidbit of where we're at at the moment. And I think no one is better primed for that than you, Travis. Fantastic. Cool. So to a radar, for those who don't know, who haven't uh, stumbled across us uh, before, we're a booking platform for adventure. Uh, so think of anything that's uh, going to be organized for you. Think of going to the Inca Trail, uh, taking a trek there, doing a safari in Africa. Uh, joining a, a group of other people or going on your own in your own private group, uh, but having everything taken care of, uh, that's basically what we do. We bring together the best tour operators from all over the world, make it easy for you to search, find and, and get away and have the experience of your life that uh, hopefully does enrich your life in some way, maybe even change it, um, but actually come back a, a slightly better person and, and a bit more worldly uh, about the uh, beautiful place we have and what we call planet Earth. Yeah. Amazing. And I don't know if you're a superhero guy, but I would love to hear about the origin story. You know, we we know the story internally, but I think it's kind of cool how, you know, you and your brother have co-founded this company. There was a venture beforehand as well. So let's talk a bit about that as well. Yeah, I won't go into the other venture too much. It was kind of one of the first social networks uh, online for travel and uh, bringing people together, sharing their photos and user generated content. Uh, but the actual story of, of how Tour Radar really kind of was, uh, I guess, the trigger uh, for, for creating and, and really going all in uh, was a, a trip that we booked to Croatia. So uh, a group of friends, about 12 of us from all over the world, we actually wanted to go uh, sailing in Croatia, which is a pretty popular spot. And uh, we organized through a US website uh, that we could actually book a, a bare boat sailing trip. And uh, Booked it, paid for it, wired uh, 5,000 US dollars across to them. Uh, everyone was pumped. Uh, we all flew into Trieste uh, in Italy because that's where the, um, the the best airport was. There was no one there to pick us up. There was no transfer. Uh, it was the middle of the night uh, in the US. So the number we were calling was not being answered. Uh, there was no contact back and forth. And so, yeah, I, I had a lot of daggers in my back. Uh, a lot of my friends were like, Travis, what's happened here? You know, is this real? Is it going to happen? Um, and so we took a very adventurous 12 hour bus ride to Zadar, uh, which was where the marina was, where we were picking it up from. And thankfully, uh, after going around to a bunch of different uh, companies, we found uh, the one and the lady was like, 
when we walked in, she said, oh, Mr. Pittman, where have you been? You know, it's like, it's like well, we've been waiting for you in Trieste, but uh, that's beside the point. At least you're here. So uh, in the end, it was fantastic. We ended up having one of the best hol holidays or vacations that I've ever had in my life. But it was a, a lot of things that we've now built into what Tour Radar actually does in terms of trust, in terms of payments, 24-7 customer support. So all those things that when you're booking a high value, complex trip on the other side of the world, you kind of want someone to have your back and you want to know, is it legit and is someone actually going to be there for you? So, so yeah, a lot of things kind of were the triggers to build into Tour Radar over time, but uh, that definitely was the, the one that uh, kicked it all off, yeah. Amazing. And 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 at this point we have um, let's do the numbers. It's fifty thousand different organized adventures on our platform and two thousand five hundred plus operators. That's correct. Yeah, nice from from all over the globe. Uh, I think we work with operators and companies in over a hundred and thirty different countries. Uh, so it's not just the the big brands uh, that we have on the platform. We also have a lot of the local. You know, they're called DMCs or tour operators on the ground who run the, the programs. And we work with those, uh, you know, businesses because they're the ones who, who typically know uh, where to go, what to do. They've lived there their whole lives. They have all the local connections. They've got the best stories to tell as well. Um, and so, yeah, no, we, we definitely try and work with uh, as many operators as we can to, to cater to all the different needs of our customers. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you. If it was yep. a first time somebody was coming on tour radar and they were curious on taking an organized adventure as the CEO, which organized adventure would you say would be the first one that people should go for? Because people have a lot of different interests. Sometimes it's culinary, it's hiking, it's trekking, it's safari. When you think of organized adventures, my mind always goes to safari first and foremost, but what do you think is the first one that that will make them a believer, an advocate. Yeah, I think where organized ventures really come into their own and shine is when you have to get outside your comfort zone. And everyone has different levels of comfort. And and what we have seen typically is that going to Europe, if you're an Australian or an American, that's pretty that's pretty much outside your comfort zone because you don't speak some of the language, but it's still pretty safe and still pretty you know, you know, comfortable, so to speak. So we do typically see uh, a lot of customers saying, look, I, I want to go, but I'm just not sure about how do I get from A to B? And also I don't speak French or I don't speak Italian or Spanish. And so they want to have their, their hand held to sort of get around and do the most things. So we see that as the stepping stone. Once people have done that, they then start to think, oh, where could I go that's a bit more adventurous? So where could I go that's maybe... Africa, maybe it's Morocco, maybe it's Egypt or even Asia. Uh, and I think once you then do that, you're like, okay, could I go to Argentina? Could I go to Patagonia? Could I start to do Antarctica? Like, so I think there's different levels that we see, uh, but definitely I'd say Europe is kind of that first stepping stone uh, to, to opening up your, your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're saying is Europe is the gateway drug to an organized, <laughs> adventure, organized adventures. <laughs> Um, it, that's that's an interesting premise because of course again there's different levels as you said um in regards to the last couple of years then obviously um if you've been within the travel industry all of us have um in the last few years we we know um there was a few things coming our way that we had to deal with and some of the companies um actually came out stronger in 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 just a quick few few words, um, how were you able to pivot in the last few years and and take Tor Radar onto another level? I would say with some of the key pivots we made in the in the pandemic. Yeah, I think the the thing when you're building a business and when you're running a business and it's growing fast and and you're hiring people or you're you know building new products all that kind of stuff. You get very caught up in in the day to day uh, or even the month to month uh, and and getting to that ability to be able to step back and and look at the bigger picture to see where is your company going or what's the vision for the company that does get lost i i found and and so we we had succeeded and done very well until you know around that point but what it allowed was to actually hit pause uh there was not that we had nothing to do we had tons of cancellations and a lot of different things going on within the company to deal with. But it actually, from an operational standpoint, allowed us to focus on the vision, the strategic goals, what we wanted to do. 
And that was super important to reignite, I think, the energy that we probably had when we began, but then really needed that kind of kick of going, okay, what could be possible if we could refocus now and have a clean slate? Uh, and so that's really was what we did. We said, okay, could we go into B2B? Because we know travel agents are a really important part of this ecosystem. We know mm -hmm. a lot of people book organized adventures through retail offline agents or pick up the phone to their agent. And we realize we're sitting on this gold miner supply that's connected, that's, you know, we have pricing, we have reviews on, how do we put that in the hands of agents to sell to their customers so they consider, okay, I don't just have to sell the, the same cruise every year or the same all-inclusive resort. I could actually offer a, a different style of travel that maybe is a bit more active or a bit more, you know, sustainable that they could actually be doing. So that was really key for us to actually think about the vision and then executing against that. And that's what we've been doing for the last two or three years. And I can really confidently say we're in a completely different place uh, and have a, a much bigger vision than we actually had pre pandemic. So it's actually super exciting. Yeah. Um, and last, before we segue onto your ultimate organized adventure that you just did, because <laughs> um, that's a big part of why um, we're here today. Um, last thing is just want to talk a bit about, category and um and community because obviously that's something as well that we're trying to to build here at tour radar and use the pandemic to very much take that as a strategic direction um where are your thoughts on and tour radar's position particularly we've got um organized adventures we've got the adventure booking platform um yep. how do you feel we are primed now to actually have almost be the host of the party and bring people together within this ecosystem yeah i think this was the the other light bulb moment was we've got a lot of stakeholders and people within this ecosystem that have all been trying to push our cart and and calling it different things and you know multi-day tours or group tours or guided vacations or whatever it may be and when you have everyone pushing a different message that message gets diluted very quickly uh, from a consumer point of view trying to digest what it's about we really feel that okay this umbrella of organized adventures hey this could be that term that unites the industry that we all use to actually resonate in a different way to consumers because consumers now when they hear the word tour unfortunately they probably think of like a big group of people not fun mm -hmm. very inflexible and that's what we want to try and reposition in the hearts and minds of our customers is hey this is about a very interactive uh, holiday it's all taken care of for you it's simple and i think that's what we took on of this challenge of okay how do we redefine this category and how can we help the entire ecosystem benefit from that? Um, and so this podcast is obviously one of those things to try and start to educate. Uh, we know we've got so many amazing, passionate tour operators around the world who are so good at what they do. They just struggle to probably get the voice to actually get this message out to the world. And I sure. think that's the opportunity we have through things like this and also through our own platform to actually educate and inspire and tell this message to a much bigger audience than the operator, maybe in Argentina or Mexico or even Australia can actually get to the world. And I think that's where we feel we're playing in a big part of that uh, to try and drive that message and educate customers that this is something you should be considering for your next vacation. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so now we're going to talk about the ultimate organized adventure, my organized <laughs> adventure, sailing in yeah. Greece pales in comparison to <laughs> you've been on this high I wasn't even there when you got back but I can see it on your face that tan that smile you just you just look like you're still like uh buzzing about it so you went yep. to Necker Island uh Richard Branson's yes. island you were one of what uh 40 um correct yep yeah mm -hmm. yeah 40 people who were there can you talk to us a bit about how that came about because I know a bit that you were super excited for months and months and months. I've only been at yep. the company seven months and you've been excited from the, from the get-go. Can you yep. talk a bit about how that came about and the experience and some takeaways from that experience? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it, the, the one thing I'm doing is, is still kind of pinching myself that I was there. Uh, like it definitely, I mean, the, the tan is still there and, and the kind of glow is there, but what I experienced was really, and, and it's not just to say, hey, I spent some time with Richard and that I was on the private island and whatever else. And it was, it was much, much more than that. And, and I think what I try to convey is that 
when I was 19, I think it was, uh, I first read his book, The Losing My Virginity, which was his autobiography. Um, and my parents have been entrepreneurial, like they have obviously been an inspiration for me, but it was that book that kind of, I guess, solidified to me, this is what I want to do. This is what mm -hmm. I want to try and do something for myself, but do it in a, in a different way. That's fun that, you know, you could not take yourself so seriously, but you can still be successful. And I think that was what I guess was so inspirational for me was to actually meet Richard face to face, to talk to him to go bike riding with him, to play tennis, to actually see in real life, he's actually as humble as what he writes. And he's actually a great person. He actually wants to have fun. He likes to stay fit. Uh, he wants to be successful, but he still does it in a, in a different type of way. And that, you know, love and family and things like that can actually still be part of your life when you actually be successful. So seeing that firsthand was just, I, 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 really struggle to put it into words but it was a phenomenal experience to bring full circle my 18 year old travis to actually where i am today uh and actually say see all the things that i've had to do to get to there and and this isn't a journey that i'm like okay box ticked i'm, I'm done you know i'm tapping yeah, out yeah. It, it's actually like i'm now as you said like hopefully the inspiration and the you know the energy that it brings back is something that I'm more passionate more than ever about organized adventures because what we did there was kind of the ultimate high end, like super high end, very selective, of course, but everything was taken care of. We had an agenda every day. We had, you know, talks, we had activities in the afternoon. So, so yeah, the experience was uh, one that the people there were phenomenal. It was business leaders. It was entrepreneurs. There was even the crown prince of Iran was there. Uh, mm. So we got to hear a panel discussion between Richard and, and the Crown Prince, uh, as well as a, a number of really you know, very successful people in different parts of the world, like in terms of the human rights activists, there was family offices there, there was entrepreneurs doing, you know, startups for the second or third time. So every conversation was just inspirational and you learned something from every single one, uh, which I really, I've been writing down and trying to capture it all so that... Uh, I can start to actually, you know, bring it into my daily life and also help uh, get that message, those messages across to uh, the people who work at Tour Radar, but even, you know, people listening to this podcast and then hopefully in the future in any keynotes or any panel discussions, that type of thing as well. Yeah. yeah. What were some of the key takeaways you took from him or from the other people who were there? Because it's not just about him. He's bringing all these people together, great minds and, and people who, have, uh, inspire, who inspire other people who are innovative and who have good brains and things like that. Um, what were some of the key takeaways you took from him or from, from the others? I know you had a yeah. lot of has Yeah, I had, had a few. Um, I think one is definitely uh, to actually, if you try and trace back how I ended up there, like all the different steps of, and just uh, coincidences and serendipitous moments of meeting different people to then get there. Cause Fiona, who's the one who organizes for forming impact, she runs it each year, but obviously she has a network who then they nominate people who can go. So you work back from that and it kind of blows your mind of how did I get to that situation actually happening? And, if COVID didn't happen, I don't think I would have had that opportunity. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Because, wow. yeah, so That's realistically speaking, lining. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, in plus the business is running very well and everything, but that was actually one silver lining as well. Um, I think one, the thing that I learned was that celebrities and, and influential people are actually just humans as well. Uh, so Richard wanted to just talk about day-to-day -day stuff, have a laugh, you know, have a joke, talk about, inspirational meaningful things as well so that was a, a pretty humbling experience um another one that uh I've, I've been sharing a bit is i learned about lq which is like love quotient uh so uh it's by jack ma uh, from alibaba so he did a study around this and found lq to be really key to leadership and success and things and so there was a lot of talk about love and actually love in the boardroom or love with you for your, um, you know, people who work with you or for you. And, uh, and there's also EQ and PQ. So positive intelligence, how you deal with situations, how do you turn anything from a, you know, a probably pretty bad situation into a gift or an opportunity, no matter what it is. And so that leads to how do you be a better person? And we talked a lot. There was a lot of vulnerable conversations there about yourself, about, uh, yeah, how you lead or how you are, you know, with your family and that type of thing. And so 
that I think was really inspirational also to talk and, and how can we bring that into our daily lives for happiness and, and also from the workplace as well. Um, yeah. I think the other two things maybe to mention was um, communities. There was a lot of talk about community uh, and, and that was really something I didn't expect to sort of take, but clearly the group of 40 people who were there, we became a pretty tight knit community by the end mm -hmm. of it for doing a very, and that's actually like most organized adventures. You go on, you become pretty tight knit when stuff goes wrong. That's when you get tighter or, you know, you have those vulnerable conversations. That's where you actually start to become pretty close together. So, so that was, uh, the community aspect is something that's got my mind going of how do we do more of this? How do we bring people, together, whether it's the operators, whether it's customers, travelers, that type of thing. So community was one. And then finally, uh, one that I completely didn't expect, but because Richard is very much into music and obviously Virgin uh, Records was one of the first yeah. businesses he built, was how musicians and artists can actually influence like pop culture and, and narrative within, you know, uh, whether it's organizations or whether it's actually communities or actually wider full populations and countries. And so that was actually, I never hadn't realized the power of, of that. And he used examples of like Bono and Bob Geldof and, and people like that who have really changed narrative in certain things because of music and the passion that people have and the connection people have to that. Um, so that was uh, something I didn't expect, but uh, definitely uh, was food for thought of how do you use influential, you know, musicians and artists and creators to actually do things in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I, I wish I was there. Can you sign me up? Here, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of people asking me if I can. Yeah. Everybody's asking. You. You <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Are yeah, you? no, that's amazing. That sounds like just uh, like everything, fun and innovation and inspiration and just, yeah, the community building. I think that's really, really powerful because that's what, you know, we're trying to do, right, with our event in October, Adventure Together, is like building yep. this community and expanding on the community and connecting with everybody in it so that we support each other. It's amazing. It, yeah. it is, and I, th I think that's how do we, I think that was one key aspect that uh, they said is that, communities have to be bigger and more valuable to the individual participants than the one who's trying to bring that community to, together. Um, and so as long as everyone within the, that ecosystem is benefiting more than the, say, host. tour radar yeah. trying to be the host, yeah. that's where things start to win and that's where momentum starts because that's what it's about. We're trying to create this category that's pushing people outside their comfort zones and, and helping local operators get more business. And, and this is, was really, I think, how do we do that through events like Adventure Together is really key that, you know, hopefully this is just one and there's many, many more in the future that start to help get the momentum going uh, and bring the different participants together for sure, you know, to, to uh, bring more value. Amazing. I'm on a high uh, now. <laughs> yeah, I I, th I think we can close that off just with one more formal plug. I think um, Shandana brought it naturally into conversation, but um, just want to say um, Adventure Together 2023 is now, tickets are now on, on available online and it's still a hybrid event. So if you can't be with us in Vienna, then please feel free to join us. I'll put the um the link below in in the notes so you can see all all the goodness if you've been to adventure together before it's going to be bigger than um 2.0 and 2023 is coming back with a bang if you haven't been before then we've got all the sessions from last year available but really there is a lot of magic that happens that we just can't capture on on camera similar to how there was in necker island i'm sure <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's a good, good, good opportunity to actually get involved in what we are building here in the Tor Radar community. And, um, yeah, this was, this was amazing. I can't wait to actually take some of these sound bites that you actually put out and actually, um, have them. Cause I think what you just spoke about as well, it's not only just about community, but even internally as well, we can share some of these moments, um, just to keep the, keep the dream alive of maybe the farming impact is is one of those moments that even changes the destiny of what tour radar is going to be further yep absolutely no uh thanks a lot for uh having me as the the first version and, and v1 um looking forward to hearing when we get to 100 episodes or a thousand oh, episodes God. like it's uh yeah no super exciting and maybe and, we'll have uh, richard branson on you know who knows, maybe. Who knows? yeah yeah it, 
as I said, anything in life is possible. So anything's possible now. I, I really feel that way. <laughs> one, one question before you go, Travis, when you're coming back, give it, give us an episode. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, prediction, uh, episode 36. Episode 36. 36. Interesting. <laughs> For, for all for all the Wu Tang Clan fans out there, that's a pretty yeah. big that's a pretty big number. <laughs> Another thing, just so just to end on some fun, I only recently heard that um, Travis's go to song is "Lose Yourself," so we're gonna have a bit of a oh karaoke off, uh, song. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Um, you know I'm from Detroit, so you really got okay. Right. So from- lo- lose yourself. We had basically karaoke on the island, and it, it got sung by a lot of people. So you yeah, know, uh, uh, why is that not recorded yeah. and and, and viral? <laughs> it needs to go Adventure. viral. No? Adventure no? together. Adventure together. Yeah. We'll record Adventure it. Yeah, no, we'll together. just lose yourself. Okay. <laughs> nice. Very good. Cool. Thank you. Well, so thank you. No worries. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.